I do a lot of supervisor training and it never ceases to amaze me. I will get up in front of the supervisors and I will ask, all right, let's be honest. Nobody started off a supervisor, right? You started off as an accountant. You started off as a cop. You started off as a firefighter. You started off as something, an engineer. And then one day, someone came up to you and they said, you are really good. Whoa, you are really good. I'll bet you could supervise some people. I'll bet, whoa, you're just what we're looking for. All right, so everybody's had that kind of discussion that ended up in supervision or management. Why did you take the job? Let's be honest. Why did you take the promotion? And overwhelmingly, it's like, well, I wanted the money. I wanted the money. I'm like, okay, all right. Now, a few years later, after you have been supervising people for a while, was it worth it? I'll tell you, supervising people is a tough job. And honestly, I don't think people know what they're getting into. I have heard from so many supervisors. I, I don't understand why people can't just come in and do their jobs. Why do we have to have all this drama? Isn't that why we pay them? And I always just sit back and smile. And I'm like, you, you really do understand that these are people, right? People. This is the most fickle, most emotional, most dangerous animal on the planet. And you actually volunteered for this? Are you kidding me? Look. This is what people do. Think of it this way. If everybody came to work, now, wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, right there, just they came to work and got there on time. That right there would be, you know, moving mountains. But people came into work. They came into work on time. They did their job. They took their assignments. They went to work. There was no drama. I wouldn't need you. I wouldn't need you. Why do you think you're there? You're a supervisor. What do you think you supervise? If people were not the way they were, I could have one manager come in, turn on the lights at the beginning of the day, and turn them off at the end of the day. This is where most of us start our career. We're at the bottom down here. And you see these two pyramids. These are the technical skills that I'm using. And in this grade, I am using no managerial skills. None. Zero. Not a one. Because I don't supervise anyone. These were the good old days. I was responsible for me. That's it. I was just responsible for me. And you were doing such a good job. Someone said, boy, you are something. So guess what? We're gonna give you this guy. All right, well, you know, you're, you're, you're still using an awful lot of your technical skills and you see you're using just the tip there. You're using a little bit of managerial skills. And so you're doing a good job. You know, Dwight hasn't killed anybody and he hasn't, you know, maimed anybody. So, all right, you're doing good. So I'll bet you we could give you somebody else. And voila. Now you have two people to watch. And you did such a great job with those two that I'm gonna give you a whole gaggle of people. Now, look at what we got. Look at that red line. Look at how many technical skills you're using. You are not using those technical skills as much as you did. Now, you still have all that knowledge I mean, you're still a top accountant. You're still a good cop. You're still a great nurse or whatever it is, engineer. But look at the managerial skills that you're using right there. And, the, and as you go higher and higher and higher into VP positions, you don't use hardly any of your technical skills anymore. Everything is managerial. Now, when I say managerial, the number one supervisory managerial skill is resolving conflict. 
Number one, number one, you can't supervise people if you can't resolve conflict. And after that comes goal setting and all the other types of things that we want our managers to do, particularly the higher they go. Now think about this. We have employees and we have supervisors for the bottom line, and that's reaching our goal. Think of it like the Ohio State football team. Okay, Urban Meyer comes out, he's got one goal. He's got one goal, win the national championship. That is the goal. Every year, that's the goal. And he wants his people to do what he tells them to do. Why? He wants you to get him to where he's gonna go. It's that simple. That's the way things work in companies. If we were a football team, we would have goals. Every company should have goals, you know, safety goals, scrap goals, profitability goals, you know, all, all kinds of different goals. So we set these goals at the beginning of the year. So how does this work? Well, if we were a football team, just to draw the analogy, one of our goals would be to score. Got to score. That's one of our goals. That is your strategic goal. Well, then we put together strategic plans. Well, that's a play. Of course, today they have a playbook that has 400 and some plays in it, but you got your strategic goal. The strategic plan is how we're going to get there. All right, that's, that's great. Here's the problem. Strategic plans are all on paper. It's all theory. I'll tell you, it is amazing to me. I will talk to so many different companies and CEOs and CFOs and COOs and HR people. And it's like, well, you know, we got to get our strategic plans in place. Wonderful. Do you realize, and I played football and I will never forget this. I figured this out at the age of 15. If you look at all those X's and O's and triangles and things on there, my coach was blocking all kinds of people with a piece of chalk. Well, you're real brave with a piece of chalk, pal, but I was a towering five foot six, weighed about 130 pounds, and you put me out there on the line against some guy that is six foot two, 240 pounds? Your play is going right down the toilet here, pal. I ain't moving that guy. I got news for you, okay? So it's all theory. It's all theory. Let me tell you, I am the most irritating person at the strategic table because we'll set the goals. Great, I love goals. We'll put the strategic plan together. And I'll tell you, I will sit there and say, okay, are the people trained? Are they developed? And more importantly, will they do it? Will they do it? I'll tell you, it is amazing to me. Oh, of course they'll do it. I'll hear from execs all the time. Oh, of course they'll do it. We'll order them to do it. Oh, really? Really? What happens if somebody doesn't do their job? What happens? People execute. You can draw all the strategic plans you want. And I got news for you. If your people hate you, they ain't going to do it. It's that simple. And I'll tell you, the number one reason people either love their company or hate their company is that first line supervisor. That is where the rubber hits the road. And if those folks don't know what they're doing, you're dead in the water. And let me just show you some examples of people, they don't really care about their job. Now, I love this. Now, understand, these are all pictures that people take when they see something fun, when they see something that they just don't believe. All right, because everybody has a camera on them and a video recorder. So this is McDonald's. And if you notice the gentleman here who is behind the register, the, now regulations, Right? FDA says that you have to have your, your head covered, you know, because, you know, if you have hair and things like this, well, he's following the regs. I just don't think anybody assumed you would take your shirt off. So this guy is taking the other guy's order and look at 
this guy over here, the tall skinny guy with the glasses. He's still ordering. He is still ordering. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, how much belly hair do you want? Now just feast your eyes here for a moment and it'll all come together for you here. This is Taco Bell. Now understand, Taco Bell has tried to get into the breakfast menu a couple times, a couple times, and they fail. Now, this is a multi-million dollar launch and they're trying to get people to stop by Taco Bell instead of McDonald's or whoever else. And now think about that. Here's a guy that clearly is not on board. This guy is not on board. And, and, and if you notice here, that is a Taco Bell breakfast sitting down there. And if you kind of notice here, that is a nice, pretty heavy, good stream of urine. So I'm assuming this is a young person. And he, now you're, you're supposed to take off your rubber gloves before you go to the bathroom. And if you look by his, his left fit, uh, left foot, he is following regulations. And I'll tell you, this is a talented guy. This is a guy, I'm assuming it's a guy, just sort of surmised here. Um, this is a guy who can hit that plate dead on. I mean, dead on. He's a shot. He should go to the Olympics. And he can take a picture of it. I'll tell you, it's a whole new digital world. This is, a, now I'll tell you, this is a guy that's disengaged. And this is Jack in the Box. Now, if you zoom in here a little bit, you'll kind of see what's going on with Kylie. If you look at her little name thing there. So Kylie was working somewhere and somebody was making a, a lunch run. They're going to go to the Jack in the Box. Okay. Well, someone apparently unhappy with Jack in the Box sabotaged it. And so you see her sandwich there. And that looks like a good sandwich, doesn't it? I mean, just just looks real fresh and everything. Got, they got all the sesame seeds glued on there just right. Um, and someone decided to draw the picture of a penis on the inside of her lid. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they did anything to it, but I don't know, too many people are going to want to, you know, sink their teeth into that. I don't think Kylie will because she does not look happy. I'll tell you, here's where it all comes home. Forbes magazine, the number one reason that strategic goals fail is because they weren't executed by employees. They weren't executed. You can draw all the strategic plans you want. That's theory. Will they do it? Will they slow down? And can they do it? Have they been trained? If you were going to diagram your company, this is the flow. If an organization was a human being, the employees would be the feet. Employees execute. And I'll tell you right now, this is not, not nice, fuzzy, feel good stuff. If your people do not execute, you're not going anywhere. And I'll tell you, there are reasons people get disgruntled. Nobody starts a job saying, boy, I hope I really screw this up. Oh yeah, just I, I just can't wait to pee in something. I just, oh, just, you know, give me a shot. They don't do that. Something somewhere goes so terribly wrong that now most of these companies out in America aren't hitting their strategic goals. And Forbes magazine is telling us it's because your people don't care or they're sticking it to you. Don't let that happen. If you're going to be a supervisor, it's the most important job in the place. And you got to be able to resolve conflict and deal with employees. That is supervisor development. Well, thank you for listening. I am Scott Warwick. For more information on me and my programs, go to scottwarwick.com. And if you hit on the far left button that is speaking and training, you'll see all the different types of programs that I do and I bring on site. Enjoy your day.